Hello, and welcome to Let's Make a Top-Down Shooter. This video is about weapon, ammo, and reloading. First, we're going to add four new attributes to the weapon set. These attributes are loaded ammo, max loaded ammo, carried ammo, and max carried ammo. Loaded ammo and max loaded ammo is based on the weapon. Carried ammo and max carried, carried ammo are, are based on the character. So with those created, we set the default values. We're setting the initial loaded ammo to zero, max loaded ammo will be 20, carried ammo and max carried ammo will just set to 100. This also means in the character, we will need an input action for reload. And in the CPP, we will need the same. If we spell it correctly. We also have this underline here because it needs to also be added to the CNUM. And with that done, we also want in the weapon the max carry loaded ammo variable. This value is exposed so that anytime you create a new weapon, the max that it can uh, have loaded is set. The current value, or the loaded ammo, uh, is just an attribute that will be handled that way. We'll set the uh, max loaded ammo here to 24. Build that. Check the failure. Oh, I forgot the F. We don't want to double, we want to float. Oh, hmm. that should be a float as well. All right, launch the editor. So when we equip a weapon, we're equipping a weapon, right? We're, uh, we're giving it the abilities and then we're setting the damage and firing rate based on the information or the value set by the weapon. So we want to do the same thing. Let's we'll duplicate this. This will be a new attribute using the same format. Weapon set init, and this will be max loaded ammo. Add new tag and select it. Next, we need to create a new effect. So it's going to be a blueprint class gameplay effect. We'll call this GE cost weapon fire. So all this is, it will have a modifier. Let's type instant. This will be loaded ammo. 
as negative 1 added to it. And the way the cost is used is inside of the weapon fire gameplay ability. We can just add the cost gameplay effect class here. So now that there's a cost, if I hit play, I click the left mouse button, nothing is happening. Because the loaded ammo value was set to zero, and it needs to be higher. So I'm also going to need a new effect. This will be GE ammo update. So this is similarly, it's an instant. It will have two modifiers. These two values will be the loaded ammo and the carried ammo. They'll both be override. And the magnitude is based on set by caller with a new data tag. We'll go call this ammo.loaded.setbyCaller. You have to click your source. Add the new tag, select it. Similarly for this one. Add a new tag, we'll call this ammo.carried.setbyCaller. So now this gameplay effect can be called with the two values that will set the loaded ammo and the carried ammo which we will be part of the reload function. We also need to make sure that we add the input events. So for this, I'm just going to duplicate, rename this one weapon reload. If you remember when you open these, it's basically just showing uh, the, the bool value with two press release triggers. Save that, then we need to add it to the input mapping context. Just add a new value down here. This will be reload. Let's hit R. And then also add the two triggers. Don't strictly need a released here, but if you wanted a, a mechanic where you're reloading over time, holding R, then uh, that would work. We also need to make sure that those input values are set in here. The weapon reload action needs to have the IA weapon reload. And then we can create the actual gameplay ability. So that's a blueprint class. This is our TDS gameplay ability. This will be GA weapon reload. First thing we do in here, so we don't forget, is set the ability input ID, weapon reload. And then as every other time, we're going to call get avatar actor from actor info. Cast that to VP third person character. Save this as a character character value. Call commit. So commit, as you can see, it's for spending resources and whatnot. Typically not something that's in, in reload, but you do have that option. We're then going to create a function. We'll just call it reload. We'll call that after commit. And then, as always, we need to call end ability. In the reload function, I'm going to get character with control drag. I want to get ability system component. And then we're going to promote that to a local variable, character ASC. So it will be used many times in this function. I 
Next we'll use a sequence. This will have three pins. For the first, we're going to get the ASC call get gameplay attribute value. We want the loaded ammo. Then we're going to promote this to a local variable, call it loaded ammo. Copy that. This will be the max loaded ammo. Similarly, variable max loaded ammo. And lastly, carried ammo. It should also be promoted to a local variable. Next, we're going to do a little bit of math. So we want to take the max loaded ammo. We're going to subtract the loaded ammo. So if your, your max for the weapon was 24 and you had 20 loaded, 24 minus 20 is going to be 4. So that value is going to be the a value that we're loading. However, we need to also make sure that the carried ammo um, does not have more than that amount. So we're going to call min. In the example I just said, if you have four ammo and carried ammo is only two, the minimum will be two. If carried ammo is greater than four, then it'll be four. And this value is what we're actually loading. So we're going to call this ammo loading. which means the loaded ammo plus the ammo loading becomes the new loaded ammo value. So we had 20. We found that we're loading 4. 20 plus 4 is 24. Similarly, we take the carried ammo, we will subtract the ammo loading. So initially that's 100, and we're subtracting 4. And that is set as carried ammo. Lastly, we're going to make outgoing spec. This will be our GE ammo update. With the spec, we're going to assign tag set by color magnitude. We choose our data tag, which is initially the loaded set by color. This value will be the new loaded ammo. We're going to duplicate that. Make sure that we send the spec along. This will now be the set or the ammo carried set by caller, and that is the carried ammo amount. Lastly, we need to call apply gameplay effect. spec to self. Make sure we uh, drag in the spec because I've never forgotten to do that. Lastly, we need to make sure, so the reload functionality itself, the gameplay ability, 
the weapon fire and weapon alt gameplay abilities were based on the weapon, so different weapons can have their own. However, the GA weapon reload is generic, and that will then be attached to the player character. So in here we have our default abilities, and we can add GA reload here. So you can see currently our loaded ammo is zero, the max is 20, the carried is uh, both 100. So if I hold left click, nothing happens. If I hit R, you can see that the loaded ammo was increased by 20, the carried ammo was decreased by 20, and then we can hold down fire. You can see that the loaded ammo went to zero, but it's still firing. The reason why that is, is because in our weapon fire game playability, the initial call to commit ability is fine. Maybe it's a good habit to always check this value. If it's false, you can uh, call end ability. However, for whatever reason, the first time this is called, it will just call end ability itself if it doesn't have the cost. But that is not the case in our loop. So in our loop, what is happening? Actually, I can just show here. I'll throw in a print, just printing out the state of that. Run this, hit R, hold down the button, you see all the trues, it'll be 20 times, and then falses. So what that means is in here, we need to have, hold down B, a branch, where in the case where it's true, we can just continue. But if it's false, we want to call end ability. So hitting left click again, nothing, hit R, reloads. Hold that down, once it down to zero, and stop shooting. And welcome to the bloopers section of this video. Uh, one thing you may have noticed while watching is that when I added the assign tag set by color magnitude here, I both forgot to actually set the magnitude. Uh, which is over here. So this is 24. What the rest of the video had shown was 20. So we'll get max loaded ammo here, which will set the proper value. Secondly, this was just being set to zero, but it was having no effect. And that was because in GE init weapon here, I needed to add a third modifier. This will be the max loaded ammo. Should be override. And it is set by caller with a tag that we set in the other one for max loaded ammo. Now when I run, you can see the max loaded ammo is now 24 instead of 20, as it should have been. And there we go, reloading sets to 24. Thanks for watching. If you liked the video and would like to see more, you know what to do. And if you would like to support this channel, or just want to download the project files, you can do so through my Patreon linked below.